Today, we're going to talk to you about the most terrifying place to any immigrant in Germany. The immigration office. Only those lucky enough to escape walk away with a visa. Welcome back. I'm Jeff. And I'm Alex. And we're two Americans living in Germany for over 10 years. And we're here to spread our knowledge with you guys to maybe help you out if you're planning to move to wherever visit Berlin. Absolutely. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get cool videos like these. And please buy the like button, a bottle of Jameson Black Barrel. His grandmother's died recently. He's just had a tough time wow. and nothing makes you feel better than some Jameson. R rough day for the, for the like button. Yeah, it's a rough month for the like button. Yeah, wow. All right. Well, anyways, I, I apologize for my shirt. I came back from uh, painting. That's okay. I, I apologize for my shirt. It's not that nice. It's a shirt. It's a child type. It covers my chest. So anyways, today we're talking about the immigration office and our personal experience with it. So please, like everything we say, take a little bit of grain of salt. This is our experiences. You might have a different one, a better one, maybe a worse one, probably a I worse hope, one. I hope you have a better one. But uh, before we begin, I'm a little thirsty. Ooh. Whiskey? Yes. Woo! That's better. Cheers. Cheers. So, Jeff. Mm. Al Sennebehörde, formerly known as, now known as... The Landesamt für Einwanderung, or the Immigration Office. They change their name to try to get a better reputation and to make their place a little less um, depressing. Yeah, in the past year, towards the end of the pandemic, they've decided to do a complete kind of image transformation because, right. unfortunately, the Ausländerbehörde, the Immigration Office, um, in Berlin specifically, but also I've heard similar stories from around Germany, uh, they're known for not exactly being kind uh, understanding, uh, helpful, and also being um, giving contradictory uh, statements, you know, from different outside of employees on what documents you need, what you don't need, which of course can be stressful. So if you don't know this, you cannot just move to Europe or any country really without getting a visa. Uh, if you're American, you luckily get a three-month visa upon arrival for tourist purposes. Right. But which you don't that, have to apply for. It's just, no. it's just you have a passport, you're allowed to be in Europe for three months. Yeah. That's the American privilege right there. Uh, and then if you want to stay for longer, you have to get a work visa or a student visa or a freelance visa or an artist visa or some way to show the government like, hey, I'm staying. This is why I'm staying. And this is more, most importantly, how I'm going to give you taxes. What bothers me a lot is when you watch any film in which uh, an American or somebody from the UK, you know, they, they go to Europe or whatever and they just randomly decide to stay, and then it just cuts to them just easily living in Europe. And they, Looking and, at you, Emily in Paris. <laughs> and they completely skip the whole, like, nerve-wracking, what document, collection of the documents, the whole uh, finding an appointment, trying to get an appointment. The, the existential actual, crisis that you have the yeah. night before your appointment. And the actual appointment in which you're, like, sweating balls. I mean, they, they skip all that, and it's like, oh, yeah, you can just live and work wherever you want in the world, and it's yeah, no it's, big deal. It's not that it's easy. Not like that, yeah. So I've now, I've now been here for 10 years, so I have my permanent visa, which means I can stay in Europe or in Germany for as long as I want, which is the best feeling in the world. Yeah. But before that, I had about six, seven visas, and each one of those uh, visa appointments went differently, and I had different experiences with every single one of them. I'd say my first one, my first visa, I got my job, my job said they'll sponsor me. So I went online, spoke no German, so I have my roommates, kind of the guy he or she was seeing for a bit helped me with all the information. And then he actually came with me to the Alcina Behörde Which or I, to the visa office. I think uh, a lot of people still do that. I mean, yeah. And I kind of would recommend that, especially if it's your first visa to bring somebody along. However, I have heard stories with this whole image revamp that the uh, German immigration office is now allowing their employees to speak English uh, because before that, they basically could not speak English with you at all. Even if this was your first visa and you should not know a word of German, they would not speak uh, English with you, right? But, but I've heard this is changing, though. This is changing now, yeah. And that's even if you're applying for a language learning visa, which is a <laughs> like, visa to learn the language. The reason I'm here is to learn it, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they're trying to get nicer. Back in the day, I had to bring a friend with me, uh, and they really helped me in the meeting. And unfortunately, I didn't book an appointment I would say book an appointment, especially yeah, especially for the Berlin uh, immigration office, because sometimes you can't find an appointment until two, three months out from, right. from from that day that you're looking for an appointment. It's actually very hard to find an appointment. So look early. Yeah, no, I was in the waiting room for, I think, six or seven hours. <sighs> and during that time, you have to go to the bathroom, but <laughs> yeah. you get nervous because your number pops up on the big board. And if you're in the bathroom and you don't come in the next like 
two minutes, then oh, and you, the next you didn't one. have an appointment, so you didn't know. Okay, my number will be called roughly around ten. So no. you, you, oh. so you get a number, you just wait. Definitely recommend to book an appointment as early as possible to yeah. make everything easier for you. Um, so you don't have to wait there in this ugly, awful 1970s built office building for hours. Absolutely. It's yeah. terrible. I mean, I mean you, you, you literally, you show up, there's several different buildings to choose from. Each oh, one, true. each one has about four or five floors and each floor looks exactly the same. And it's just endless hallways. Everything's gray. Uh, and again, your whole fate in Germany depends on this meeting. And even if this is a renewal, there's no guarantee. So no. even when I would get a renewal, uh, you'd be sitting there just tapping your foot like, please, God, please, God, let, 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 let me get a nice employee because it, unfortunately, it really depends on the person you get and what their attitude is that day, so, which, 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 which is that. not how it should work. No, not at all. And I, I will say if you have a, a pretty you know structured, fest job, uh, you, have to, you have to apply for a new one, you should be fine. 90% of the cases I've ever heard of are always okay getting the renewal. Yeah. The first one's a stressful one. And especially like the anxiety you get the night before when you know you have to go into the building where dreams just kind of go, go to die. Yeah. And it's great when you watch people it's leave a the building. Factor. It's a nightmare factor. It's a total nightmare factor. <laughs> and when you watch people leaving the building, they're either like just got married excited or extremely depressed. So it's best to go with like tunnel vision and don't look at anyone because you're going to kind of freak yourself out. But it is, it is true. And this happens to me every time I go. And I've, I'm only here 12 years, so I've done... I don't know, seven or eight different <laughs> visa uh, renewals appointments uh, at the Auslona Bahura. But yeah, my first visa was different than his because uh, I didn't have a, a company that was sponsoring me and I didn't have a job at all. True. And so in order to stay in, in Germany for more than the three months, I decided, okay, I'll get the language learning visa because it's probably the easiest to get and it allows you to stay in Germany for a year and learn German because I wanted to learn German. I, I was interested in learning German. Went to my appointment by myself. I was like, ah, I'll be fine. But then I encountered the fact that they would not speak English with me, even though they knew I was there to learn German. I've been in Germany for a matter of weeks at this point. Um, she refused to speak uh, English with me. And so she just keeps a asking me the same question over and over again. I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. And then she's kind of just like, okay, done nine. Like, like okay, basically saying like, okay, then I'm not going to give you the visa. You, you can go screw yourself now. And... As that was happening, one of her colleagues came in to grab a piece of paper. He overheard the conversation and he literally said, ah, I just like, I, I, I couldn't understand what he said, but just the, the hand gestures, I was like, ah, just give it to him. Fine. And then, so I got my first visa purely out of luck just because that, of that nice guy. So it just shows you, depending on the attitude, that's, that's who you get. So um, that was kind of stressful, but I got that visa and allowed me to stay in Germany for a year, learning German. And during that time, I was able to slowly, you know, search for jobs. And eventually, I, tra I transitioned to a uh, freelance work visa. So Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, my last one, like I said, once you've been, as an American, if you've been in Germany for more than seven years, I believe it is, you can apply for your permanent residency, which pretty much means you have a visa uh, that cannot expire, only the card expires every 10 years. But getting that visa, it was during COVID, so you couldn't book an appointment because they're all booked out for literally eight, nine, 10 months. Oh yeah. yeah. I knew my visa was gonna um, expire. So I had, I had to get it as soon as possible. Mm. So I sent, I looked at all the paperwork that I needed. I sent it all in uh, via post, like with the mailman, which I've done. Like if somebody wanted to steal your identity, like they, have, they have the packet to do it right there. I mean, cause usually you, br you bring it all, you don't send it in, you bring it physically with you on your appointment day. Right. So you always have control over so it. I, I just mailed it to the building and said, here you go. I want to say a month, month or two. Okay. Yeah. Got my appointment, went in, talked to the person. She was super nice and lovely and said, here you go. And she spoke to me really quick. And I really had to pee. Like I had to pee really, really bad. And all the bathrooms are closed. I think, I think cause of COVID. Yeah. I'm assuming, I don't know, the bathrooms are closed. And I really had to pee. Like how can you have, you're having hundreds of people coming to office know, every day. How can you lock the bathrooms? I, I don't understand, but they're all locked. And also, like I said, you don't want to leave. So I'm in the office. I'm like, sitting there, she's talking to me like, do you understand? Yeah, yeah, I understand, I understand. I didn't understand a word. But I said, at the end, I said, I can stay here forever. She's like, yeah. And I said, I never need to come back here ever again. She's like, correct. And I said, I understand. Thank you very much. And I got, ran out of there. I got out. I screamed out of excitement. And then I found a bush and went, and went pee pretty hard. <laughs> No, it's like a bunch I, I of needles say, and yeah. daggers at you. You're just so scared and so nervous the whole time. Yeah, the, the worst is, so, so you're given a waiting, so even, even if you have an appointment at 10 a.m., you, you, you're given this uh, like waiting room number, Vorgangsnummer, I think it's called, uh, or Vatennummer, depending on you know, which, website, you're, which website you're looking at. 
And, and, and you show up uh, before your appointment and you're just sitting at the, looking at this digital sign waiting for your number to be called. But important note, show up early. So my last appointment uh, was the first time, because I've recently got married, had my honeymoon. A couple weeks ago. Thank you. Um, married to a German. And so uh, normally I had freelance uh, work visas, but the time I was like, ah, I'll just get the, you know, you're married to a German family visa. Cause I was like, ah, it's less paperwork. So did that. I uh, had to bring my wife along with me to the appointment. Uh, first of all, I screwed it up because the night before, as I'm collecting my documents, which is very few, I already knew I had them all, collecting all my documents. The last thing, okay, I just need my pass and then realized didn't have my passport because a week before I'd been on my honeymoon, had it in the uh, glove box of, my, of the car we were using. And that was the one thing that we forgot to take <laughs> out of the van. They will not give me the visa tomorrow. No, I'm gonna, there, there'll be zero chance yeah, I'm give you a visa. Yeah, yeah, zero chance. No passport? I, I don't even know it's you. Yeah, they're not forgiving at all. They're gonna have to reschedule for another three months from now. It's gonna cause a whole mess. So I was really pissed at myself. So go to the appointment. My appointment is at 9.30. We show up at nine. They call my number at 9.15. Now, keep in mind, if, he, if I'd showed up at 9.20 thinking I'm totally fine for my appointment, I would have missed that because they, when your number goes up, it's only up for about two minutes. Right. And if you don't show up into the little room that it says to go to, one. they change the number. So that's not fair. If I, if I showed up at 9.20, I would have been on time, but I would have missed my appointment. So anyways, show up early to your appointment. So I, I go inside with my wife for the appointment. I tell the woman, you know, of course in German, I'm so sorry, I forgot my passport on my honeymoon. Is there any way, own in my eyes and pass, you know, like without my passport that we can do this? No, there's no way. And the woman, she paused for a minute and she's like, mm, this is not good, this is not good. And she, and she sits and she thinks for a little bit and she's like, okay, do not tell anybody that I did this, but I will let this go through, but just know this is not allowed, but I'm gonna give you your visa anyways. So he's not telling anybody by telling literally the whole internet. I didn't say her name, okay. So I think honestly things have changed at the visa office because she was very kind, very understanding. Now, now, if this was my first visa, she wouldn't have allowed this, but the, what a weight that falls off of you when you get approved for your visa, even though this is the seventh renewal, I, there's still no guarantee, you know what I mean? No, so, it's, it's honestly the best feeling in the world. And the thing is, like, I, I think the best advice I would give is, is look, look on the website, look at all the documents you need, add more into there. You wanna add some mixture of fluff documents? Yeah, get always, oh, if, if you're looking at your documents and there's one that you aren't quite sure if you need, always bring extra Beef it up. because sometimes they'll ask for one that is not on the official list and you'll be like, oh, good thing I brought this. Like just, exactly. just if you're like, this might help, just bring it. You have to bring everything in, in paper, personally, hand it to them because this is Germany and in some ways we're living in the future and in many more ways we're living very much in the past, especially when it comes to the digitization. Yeah, and right before we go, last piece of advice, Germans love their organization. So not only have all your documents, have them in a folder, ha have them labeled, don't have them in a crumpled up in a backpack and you're looking for them. Trust me, that improves your chances of getting uh, accepted a lot because Germans love that you took the time to take things seriously. And it makes your life easier too, and your life too. Yeah. But uh, you know what else makes my life easier? This whiskey. Yay or nay? Big yay. Big yay? Big yay. Loving the Jameson. Love it. So everyone, thank you again so much for, uh, for watching us. Yeah. And if you liked this personal anecdote stories, Please let us know. Give us a little like and, uh, and you know, share it. You can do things to YouTube. Yeah. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Why not? And until next time, please stay safe, stay healthy, and stay thirsty. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks. We're going to take you to the ungodly, horrific place. Er, no. What am I saying? What was the sentence? I'll have it in about a week. And the... Uh, Undyne.